Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Marr, that noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. Today I would like to give you four of my favorite things, or rather the only four changes that were made in the Star Wars Special Edition that I enjoyed. Now let me preface this. Last week I did a video covering the special edition and other changes made to the Star Wars movies over the years. But today I decided that I would talk about one of the changes I like. And the reason I'm only giving you four is there really are only four that I like. Now, the digital cleanup to the movies is fantastic. I honestly believe that the only thing that the movies really needed was a proper digital cleanup for modern presentation. Thankfully, we got that, and that is, that doesn't really count as a change to the film, that is just more of a bringing it up to proper uh, display standards of our modern time. Now, I happen to own the unaltered versions, that limited release from 2006. Those, however, were not given a proper digital cleanup. A digital remastering, I believe, is the term that they use. So those those alterations, if you can call them that, are welcome and great, and I'm so glad they did those. Now, before I get into my four that I like, let me give you some ones that I don't mind. I'll put it that way. I don't mind the additional shots of Cloud City and some of the added windows to give us views of the outside. Or the views outside of Lando's Palace. I don't mind the changes made to the Mos Eisley spaceport to give it more of a... make it a little bit more lively. I don't mind those. Though maybe I could have done without the uh, Jawa swinging from the Ronto. But, you know, whatever. And... I don't mind the... In the 2004 DVD release, I don't mind that the original Emperor was replaced by Ian McDermott. In The Empire Strikes Back, in the scene where Vader speaks to it. Though, I would have preferred they just left that alone. So those are some of the changes that I don't mind. I also don't mind some of the additional shots of the Battle of Yavin in the original film where you see some improved shots that were added of the battle between the X-Wings and the TIE Fighters as well as that great shot of the X-Wings approaching the Death Star so those are the changes I don't mind but let me talk about the ones that I liked number one I really liked the added scene that was put back in, that had been filmed, of Luke Skywalker reuniting with his friend Biggs before the Battle of Yelvin. Now that scene was filmed originally, and therefore was not an addition. It was just added in, and it wasn't that scene had been had been deleted. 
But the addition of it is not a violation of the movie. Because that was originally filmed for the movie. Also, it gave a little bit more context when Biggs is killed during the Battle of Yavin to the... There's sort of a, a bit of dramatic music, and now that kind of explains why. And the fact that that was Biggs, and that Luke got to reunite with him, I think is a great addition. And I am very glad that they put that scene back in, and I really think that it does add something. It doesn't really make too much of a difference with it gone, but I do like that it's there. That it was added back in, and it does give a little bit more meaning to the, the Battle of Yelvin. And so I, I like that. So that's our number four, Luke reuniting with Bix. Number three. I like the added scene of the Wampa in The Empire Strikes Back. The Wampa is the ice monster that attacks Luke. In the original cut of the movie, the Wampa costume was so bad, and I've seen what it looked like. It looked so terrible and so fake that they could only add a couple of shots of it walking past the camera at waist, at waist height so that you couldn't see how crappy the face looked. So they had to use a less is more approach because it looked awful. In the special edition, however, they added, and not a CGI effect, by the way, a man in a suit, additional shots of the Wampa, where we get to see the Wampa in full. We get to see it chewing on something, we get to see it walking toward Luke, we get to see it missing an arm, Kind of a gruesome shot. But it's a man in a suit. That is brilliant. And it looks fantastic. Number, so that's number three. The added scenes of the Wampa. Or added shots, I should, should say. Not added scenes. Number three. The scene of Vader returning to his Star Destroyer from Cloud City. This had to be brand new, a brand new scene was filmed. Of Vader boarding his shuttle, landing in the docking bay of the Executor, and walking down the ramp past his Imperial officers. That scene was filmed for the special edition. And I think it's great because it, it's, a, it's a missing moment in the original cut of film. I think Vayner just says, you know, bring my ship. And then the next thing we see is on his ship. So it's kind of a transition moment that we were missing. and uh, Or kind of a, a moment that, we, that needed to be... I wouldn't say needed to be there, but it kind of adds a missing step. And it looks great, and it looks seamless, and you can't really tell that it wasn't filmed for the original. So that's uh, the number two, Vader returning to his Star Destroyer. And number one, and mind you, these are not in order of importance. These are just an arbitrary order. These could be in any order, and, I, and it would be fine with me. And number one is the celebration at the end of Return of the Jedi, when the music is changed and you get to see the galaxy celebrating. Now, I have nothing against the Gub Dub song, but I feel personally that the music that was the new music that was added for the special edition adds a grandeur that was missing with the Yub Dub song. To me, it just feels more epic, more bittersweet. 
and it's it to me it was more emotionally involving. I think I found myself moved to tears by that piece. The piece is now called Victory Celebration, I believe, is what it's called on the soundtrack. And then this leads us to getting to see Moss Eisley, Cloud City, Coruscant, and in the 2004 DVD release, Naboo, celebrating the death of the Emperor and the destruction of the Death Star. This I like because it gives us a sense that this is a larger victory. Now, I think that the original ending was fine, but I just feel that this is a much better um, approach to ending the saga. Now, and this is our big caveat. To me, it would have been perfect if they had not, in the 2004 DVD release, if they had not added Hayden Christensen into the Force Ghost scene. This is not because it's Hayden Christensen. It's because, as I mentioned last week, there is a kindness on Sebastian Shaw, who's the original actor, on his face that gives heart to that sequence that those, those shots of Aiden Christensen do not have. That shot of Aiden Christensen looks terrible. He's smirking and not smiling. There's no joy and logically it doesn't make sense because the good man that died was the redeemed Anakin Skywalker who was Sebastian Shaw. Logically speaking. So, that is the only thing. So if I had to say my favorite ending of Return of the Jedi is the 1997 Special Edition. Not the 2004 DVD release and not the 2011 Blu-ray release. So that, those are my four things that I enjoy about the special edition. And they are, number one, the victory celebration at the end of Return of the Jedi. Number two, Vader returning to his Star Destroyer in The Empire Strikes Back. Number three, the Wampa. And number four, Luke reuniting with Diggs. So those are my things that I enjoy about the special editions. Let me know if you enjoy anything about the newer versions of the movies. My name is Brendan Martin. That noise you hear is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you.